everybody. Welcome back to another awesome day, another awesome vlog. I'm Lisa, behind the camera is Bill, and together we are the Lisa. Today we have some exciting and interesting facts for you about Frontierland. There are a lot of things about Frontierland that most people don't know, and we're hoping to share some of those with you today. Frontierland was one of five lands that was here on opening day. The other lands were Fantasyland, Tomorrowland, Adventureland, and Main Street, USA. Frontierland was really one of the lands that Walt wanted to just kind of be an open area that people could come in, and it was supposed to be themed to the mid-1800s of the Wild Wild West. He just wanted it to be a lot of walking trails and not so many attractions, but he definitely wanted it to be themed for the cowboys and the pioneers that were out searching for gold back in the mid 1800s. Let's get started. The gateway into Frontierland, as well as this area, which looks similar to a fort, was made out of true ponderosa pine so that you would have the real feel and smell of the mid 1800s. I'm currently standing under the entrance into Frontierland from Fantasyland in the Fantasy Fair area. And a lot of people don't even know that this area exists or this entrance exists. This is the least traveled walkway in Disneyland. There's also seating here where you can take a seat and relax in the shade if you just want to get out of the crowds. Let's go to the next one. We're standing outside the Westward Ho Trading Company, which is the store right when you walk through Frontierland. You can see that there were elk and deer antlers up on the walls, and that is because back in the mid-1800s, supply stores ended up putting up antlers so that cowboys who weren't able to read knew where they could go to get their supplies. <laughs> The Indian outside the Westward Ho Trading Company symbolizes where you used to be able to buy tobacco and cigarettes on opening day in Disneyland. This was actually here and tobacco was actually sold until 1991. Even though tobacco is no longer sold or available for purchase inside Disneyland, the Indian still remains. He has a twin over on Main Street outside one of the stores along the way right by the Main Street Cinema. You have to watch our Main Street video. In the center of the walkway, just after entering Frontierland, you're going to see a flag. Now, even though this looks like an American flag, it isn't a true American flag. That is so that it doesn't have to be retreated at the end of the day or if there is a tragedy. It is a flag that can remain up all the time. We've made it to the shooting exposition, which is just inside Frontierland, off to the right-hand side. There are 60 targets in here, and you get 25 shots. If you make it into Disneyland first thing in the morning, there are a lot of times that the guns are available at no charge. You don't even have to pay for the first little while. So if you make it here at Rope Drop, make sure you head over here first thing. When Disneyland first opened, they actually had lead pellets. And the problem with that was, every time they hit the target, there was something messed up on the paint. Every day, at the end of the day, they were spending so much time and so much money fixing the targets that they just decided that it was very inefficient and too costly. So they changed them to laser shots. Make sure you look down as you walk throughout Frontierland because you're going to find hoof prints and you're going to find lines from the covered wagons back in the 1840s and in certain areas you'll even find little animal footprints. Is a watering station where you can come and fill up your water bottles. Of course, there are 
all sorts of areas around Disneyland that you can get ice cold glasses of water, but this is a nice place where you can come up and fill up at any time. It's also a great place you can fill up a bucket in case your horse gets thirsty. In 2007, this tree officially became the Halloween tree. That gave way to Ray Bradbury's dream of having his Halloween item here in Disneyland. storefront here and it is honoring Fess Parker who played Davy Crockett in the Davy Crockett movies. There are only four attractions in Frontierland, one of which is Big Thunder Mountain. But Big Thunder Mountain is not the ride that was previously here. It was actually called Mine Train Through Nature's Wonderland and it was a slow, sedate, train ride that took you through the vast areas of the wild wild west. You could see all types of animals and just open nature and it was a nice slow train. However, because of the popularity of fast moving rides, they ended up changing it in 1979 to Big Thunder Mountain. And Big Thunder Mountain has been a hit. One of the great things about Big Thunder Mountain is its efficiency. They can get so many people on it and the trains move so quickly that it is one of the most efficient rides in Disneyland. Which is great of course for the cast members because they can keep their lines moving which always keeps customers here happy. Right across from Big Thunder Mountain and next to the Rivers of America there used to be a small cart here sold McDonald's french fries. It was the only thing they sold and it was of course a hit. However, they stopped selling those many, many years ago. But the other thing that's really interesting is right here behind me there used to be an area where you could actually fish in the rivers of America. The rivers of America were regularly stocked and one of the reasons that they stopped doing this is a lot of people would end up sneaking and taking the fish with them and they would find dead fish throughout the park which was really, really stinky. Only a couple of years ago, this used to be Big Thunder Ranch. It has now been changed to the entrance to Star Wars Land. Right behind me is the Golden Horseshoe where they have the best food in Frontierland. You can get anything from chicken to fish. It is really delicious and highly recommended. The second attraction in Frontierland is the Mark Twain. It can hold up to 300 people. This is a ride that actually was here on opening day and was a favorite when Disneyland first opened. A lot of people want to know if this boat rides on a track. The answer is yes. They also want to know if the paddle wheel actually propels the boat forward. And the answer to that is also yes. <laughs> Along the rivers of America, you can see this petrified tree off to the side. A lot of people will walk on by and don't even notice it. But this tree is approximately 55 to 70 million years old. It is actually something that Walt gave to his wife for an anniversary present, which she ultimately donated to Disneyland to put on display right here in Frontierland. The third attraction is the sailing ship Columbia. This ship is actually a replicate of Robert Gray's ship and he was the first American to circumvent the globe in his ship. The interesting thing about this ship is downstairs there's a museum which a lot of people don't even know about so you can go down there and you can see a lot of really cool things. The fourth attraction in Frontierland is Pirate's Lair on Tom Sawyer Island. On opening day, this was actually called Tom Sawyer Island, but in 2007 it changed to Pirate's Lair when Captain Jack Sparrow decided to take over the island. Since that time, there's been some controversy because some people believe that because Captain Jack Sparrow has taken 
taken over the island, that now it should be a part of New Orleans Square instead of Frontierland. But Disneyland still says it's a part of Frontierland, and Disneyland always wins. Alright everybody, we're going to end our video here. I hope you enjoyed all of the things that we had to show you in Frontierland. Make sure the next time you're here that you check out all of the little details there are to be seen. When Walt Disney was planning Frontierland, he actually sent a film crew all the way out to New York to film an area of land that he knew was going to be perfect for Frontierland. When they brought the footage back, he used it in order to design exactly what he wanted in Frontierland and it turned out to be just perfect. I hope you enjoyed our video. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!